Hello fifth graders, welcome to lesson 1.7, multiply one digit numbers. Let's get started. Today's lesson objective is I can evaluate multiplication of two digits by one digit using the standard algorithm and a multiplication chart with 100% accuracy in multiple attempts. Remember that the objective needs to be written in your digital math notebook, so pause to do that now. Let's begin with an unlock the problem. It says, each day an airline flies nine commercial jets from New York to London, England. Each plane holds 293 passengers. If every seat is taken on all flights, how many people would fly on the airplane from New York to London in one day? The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to estimate. We're going to use some rounding to get to a number that is close and reasonable. We're going to round 293 to 300. Then we can use a basic math fact of 9 times 3 is 27. And knowing that if we have two zeros in 300, we will have two zeros in our answer. So we think that this is going to be about 2,700 people who fly on an airplane from New York to London each day. Let's go ahead and do the actual multiplying to see if we are close. When we do multiplying with a single digit, we always start in the ones place. So the first thing we do is we multiply nine times three straight up right here. 9 times 3 is 27. We write the 2 on top and the 7 underneath. In our next step, we're going to go diagonally. 9 times 9. 9 times 9 is 81. But we don't write the answer 81 because we have to add the two tens there above it. So we have 81 plus two is 83. So the eight goes on top and the three goes underneath. And then we're ready for step four. We go all the way diagonal two times nine. Two times nine is 18, but we have an eight on top. So we add 18 plus eight and we get the number 26. Now we don't carry the 26 because we're all out of numbers up here, so it drops straight down. So our answer would be 2,637, which is close to our original estimate of 2,700. Great job so far. The next slide in this video is where you will fill in things in your digital math notebook. These are some strategies about multiplying that will help you when you are multiplying larger numbers. One thing is to use a multiplication chart. A multiplication chart like this one here is helpful until you know all of your math facts. It is also helpful to know that any time we multiply zero by a number, like in this row here, our number is, our answer is always going to be zero. We also know that anytime we multiply a number by one, we get that same number. And we can see that in this row right here. So one times any number is that number. If we multiply by two, then we double a number like two, four, six, eight. So if we follow down our twos column, we can see that our numbers are doubling. We can think of this also as skip counting by twos or threes or whatever your multiplication is. So that could be like two, four, six, eight. So counting by skip counting is another way of multiplying. A helpful fact to know when we multiply is that if we multiply by the number five, where our, our answers will always end in a five 
or a zero. And if we multiply by the number 10, our answers will always end in a zero. These are some good things to know about multiplying. Nines can be kind of tricky, and that's our next part here, is to fill in nines. Nines have a pattern. We always think of one less. So if we multiply nine times six, one less than six is five. And then we think five plus what equals nine? Hmm, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that would be a four. So I know that the answer is 54 because five plus four equals nine. Let's go ahead and fill in our nines pattern. So we have zero times nine. Well, anything times zero is zero. One times nine, anything times one is that number, nine. Two times nine, we double it, 18. Three times nine, one less than three is two, and two plus seven is nine, 27. Four times nine is 36. Five times nine is 45. And then a funny thing happens right here our numbers reverse order. Six times nine is 54, which is the same as 45, just backwards. Seven times nine is 63. Eight times nine is 72. Nine times nine is 81. And 10 times nine is 90. Pause now so that you can type these answers into your digital math notebook. Time for our lesson activity. Firstly, we're going to estimate and then we will solve to get the actual product. In order to estimate, we're going to round. I'm gonna to round to the tens place. So I underline the digit and look next door. Next door, I see a three. Three doesn't make me round up, so I know the six is gonna stay the same. So I'm gonna estimate it of 60 times eight. Then I can use my math fact of six times eight equals 48, and then a zero jumps on the end. In order to find the actual product, you'll write it like this, 63 times eight, and you'll solve to find the answer. Your answers need to be typed into your digital math notebook. Almost finished, fifth graders. When you're comfortable with this lesson, complete your exit slip to show your teacher your understanding. Great job.